Do you like TikTok? The founder of this world's most downloaded app, Zhang Yiming, stepped down yesterday. It is shocking and weird that this 38-year-old founder of the $250 billion company suddenly stepped down. Believe it or not, it is a common phenomenon in recent years that many Chinese tech tycoons have stepped down. Or should I say, being stepped down. What is going on? They are afraid of something. What is it? You may find it out in this episode. Welcome to Beyond the News, I'm Fei. Yesterday, the TikTok founder Zhang Yiming stepped down from the CEO position of the ByteDance, the TikTok's parent company. He handed the CEO position to the co-founder Robo Liang. In Zhang's resignation letter, he stated, the reason is because he is not a good manager and not good at socializing. He wants to step down from the day-to-day -day management role so that he can put more focus on long-term projects, such as the long-term strategy, the company culture and social responsibilities. Zhang also said he wants to use this time to recharging, do some reading, listening to music, and doing some reflection. Even though the letter sounds all normal and well, many people are not buying what was said. There must be more to the story. The suspicion comes mainly from two perspectives. The first is that Zhang is relatively young. Zhang is only 38 years old and hasn't even reached the mid-age crisis yet. Compared to many other CEOs, Zhang is at his prime. So his stepping down makes no sense in that regard. The second is this eight-year-old company, by any standard, is at the beginning of an upward trajectory. In March 2021, Bloomberg reported that the company is valued at $250 billion, which is more than the worth of Coca-Cola and Twitter. In 2020, its ad revenue had surpassed the Uber, Snapchat and Twitter combined, only behind Alibaba. ByteDance's most popular product, TikTok, has more than 2 billion downloads worldwide and its daily active users has surpassed 600 million. We have to remember that this app is only 4 years old. With the company is expanding phase for normal company founder, this should be the most exciting time, not a stepping down time. And interestingly enough, Zhang is not the only Chinese tech CEO who stepped down recently. Just a month ago, the founder of the Chinese e-commerce giant Pinduoduo, you can think of it like a Chinese version of eBay, also stepped down. The stepping down announcement came right after they announced that the number of active users on their platform has surpassed Alibaba's Taobao and become the biggest e-commerce platform in China. It got people thinking, why are these apparently successful tech CEOs always stepping down right at the time that they are supposed to become even bigger? We first need to understand the relationship between these tech companies and the Chinese Communist Party, which in summary is a love but distrustful relationship. The Chinese regime likes these tech companies because they are a great tool to help the party to maintain control in China. The party can use these companies to censor speech they don't like, and these tech companies' data can help the government to better control its people. Like the social credit system in China, the government cannot establish such a system without these tech companies' help. However, even though the government needs these companies, but they don't trust them. The regime fears the power these companies have and fears that it would lose the control of the country over the big techs in China. Therefore, in order to have total control over these tech companies, the regime requires them to set up communist party branches within. Take ByteDance as an example. In 2014, two years after Zhang created the company, they established their first communist party branch. Three years later, the company established a communist party committee. In the ByteDance Beijing office alone, there are 130 Chinese Communist Party members. To set up branches, that is the first level of control from within the company. The second layer of control is from various government agencies in making sure that whatever produced will be within the red line. If something 
is not aligned with the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda direction, it will be removed no matter the consequences. The first product of ByteDance was an app where people can share memes, videos and jokes. At its peak, the app has 200 million users. However, in 2018, because some of the jokes were too edgy or too sensitive for the government, the whole app was ordered to shut down. The parent company ByteDance lost millions because of this. However, the CEO Zhang Yiming still has to publicly apologize, criticizing the app as inconsistent with socialist core values. Poor guy. As for the regime, these methods of protection are not secure enough. Fear was amplified last year with Alibaba. The boss of Timor was having an affair. The story quickly became trending on Weibo, which is a Chinese version of Twitter. So to minimize the negative press, Timor's parent company Alibaba ordered Weibo to take the story off the trending topic and deleted all related posts. Within an hour, any discussion on this topic was gone from Weibo. Can you imagine that? You may ask, how is Alibaba able to order Weibo to do such a thing? It is because Alibaba is the second biggest shareholder of Weibo, holding 30% of its shares. Alibaba's action angered the Chinese regime because in mainland China, only the Office of Central Cyberspace Affairs Committee has the authority to censor speech. What Alibaba did is like telling the government that a private company might have more control over people's opinion than the government. This is something the regime can't accept. So very quickly, there was a complaint made against Alibaba, accusing the company of using capital to manipulate public opinion. Soon after, the government started doing antitrust investigations on Alibaba. And in April this year, China's Administration for Market Regulation issued its biggest fine ever to Alibaba, a whopping $2.8 billion. From Alibaba's example, we can see that if you show a slightest sign of betrayal or out-of-control tendency, no matter how well you behaved in the past, the regime will punish you regardless. And the punishment on Alibaba is also sending a signal to other companies that the big brother is watching you. Let's now come back to the TikTok CEO stepping down drama. It is widely acknowledged the main reason is political conflict. We as outsiders may never know the true reasons behind, but we shall see more details soon. For entrepreneurs in China, it is tragic that the fate of their businesses is in the regime's hand. When they need you, you are the best friend. When you are not needed or out of line, they can shut you down immediately. If we can see this trend, it wouldn't even be more obvious to those tech CEOs. In order to avoid being stepped down, it is better to do voluntary stepping down because they never know how they think about it. What do you think about this TikTok CEO stepping down? Leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching Beyond the News today. I'm Faye. I'll see you again very soon.